Hi, I'm Jesse Mahana. I'm the staff pastor here at New Spring Church, and it's my joy to welcome you to 252 Theater Online. Welcome to 252 Theater's online service, a ministry of New Spring Church and Wichita, Kansas. Fun lives here, so get ready to have a great time and learn about a great big idea. That's right. A big idea is something God wants to do inside you to change the world around you. The biggest ideas are the big three. We hope after joining us online, you'll know that you can treat others the way you want to be treated, make the wise choice, and trust God no matter what. You'll get to experience fun games, skits, worship, and of course, a powerful story straight out of God's Word. More than a video, this is your chance to be a part of something amazing. So get your popcorn, crank up the volume, and get ready for incredible fun. It all starts in three, two, one. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. I think one of the worst feelings that a person can experience is when you find out that you've been left out of something, right? When you find out that your friend had a birthday party and didn't even invite you to it. Maybe when you sit down at a cafeteria table at a new school and nobody comes and sits with you and you feel alone. Or maybe even when you're on the basketball court and it's time to pick teams and the captains totally skip over you. Well, you know what? I can remember there was a time, and this is one of the most embarrassing things that I've ever done. And we had an event for all of our volunteers at Kids World, and uh, for all of our volunteers here in 252 Theater. And I stood up on a stage and I took time to thank every single one of our staff members. And you know what? After I did that, I stepped off the stage and my wife told me, Miss Erica said, Cody, you forgot to mention somebody. I got to tell you, I felt pretty crummy after that. And so we've all been on that side of it. We've all been on the side of feeling like, oh, man, I've, I've been left out. I feel li looked over. And we've also been on the other side of that where we've done it to somebody else, too. Well, now we're going to see what God's word has to say about this. As we talk about the big idea of respect, everybody say respect. respect. That's right, which is showing others they're important by what you do do and what you say. And those two things are really important. And we're going to find out about what Jesus had to do and how Jesus modeled this by including people who are often left out. Now, uh, to help me out, I'm going to have a call up a few people to help me out as we go to uh, play a little game. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see right here. Yeah, come on down. Yeah, you'll be amazing at this. Come on up for me. Give a round of applause. All right, this is a game called Reverse Charade. So I'm going to come have you stand right here for me. You're going to look out at that audience. Now, here's what's going to happen. We're actually going to scoot back just a little bit. Here's what's going to happen is we're going to put up a picture on the screens, but you're not going to see it, and it's the audience's job to act it out, okay? Now, as you do that, as they act it out, you're going to tell me, and you're going to guess what they're doing. Does that make sense? All right, so let me grab our microphone. I'm going to grab the red one. That way, they'll be able to hear you when you guess. And uh, we're going to put up, this is just an example picture. This is just a test run. So, uh, let, let's see. There we go. Perfect. All right. Now, uh, we're going to put up a picture. You just keep your eyes looking that way, and you guys can stand up and help act out what's happening, okay? Monkey. Monkey. That is correct. Now, one thing I should mention is that you can't make noises. That's what makes it a little bit easier. You can't say words because you could have just been like, it's a monkey. Okay, yeah, it's a monkey. So we're going to do this without making noise. So let's do another one. Here we go. This is just a practice one. See if you guys can see if you can guess it. Uh -huh. Oh, I like that motion. This. What do you think they're doing? Beeping. Are you beeping what? A horn. A horn. That's right. Driving a car. That is awesome. That, now, that is a place that you definitely need respect with others. Okay. This is the real one. This is the first hint into our story today. So, audience, get back up on your feet. I'm going to need your guys' help for this, okay? So they're going to do they're going to show it, and you're going to guess what it is. You can't see it. Let's see if you can figure it out. Wait for it. Oh, they're giving you a pretty good motion there. What do you think? Fishy. 
That is correct! You guys are amazing actors. You can grab a seat. Thank you so much for helping me out. That's right. Our story today starts off with a fisherman. And uh, this fisherman, was, his name was Simon. You might know him as Peter. And what the Bible tells us is that Jesus was preaching on the sea, by the Sea of Galilee. And he went into this man's boat, Simon. And where he told Simon, uh, now it had been, Simon was a fisherman. He had fished the whole night beforehand and didn't catch anything. But Jesus came into his boat. From his boat, he was teaching to the crowd that was there. And what Jesus did, he told Simon, take your boat out, go a little bit farther, and let your nets down on the other side. Now, you can imagine Peter's response he said, Master, it's interesting that he called Jesus Master at this point, but he said, Master, we've fished all night and haven't caught anything, but because you have told me, I will do it. And we're going to find out what happened next with another round of reverse charades. I need somebody who can help me out, somebody who can come on up. Um, yeah, right there in the striped shirt. Yeah, come on down. You'll be amazing at this. Come on down. Are you a good guesser? Okay, perfect. Yep, come stand right over here for me. We're going to put the picture up. The audience is going to act it out, and you're going to guess what they're doing. Okay, so here we go. Let's do it. Oh. <laughs> That's a pretty... Watch your head there. Don't, don't, go, don't get hurt doing that. A fish. Uh, is it, yep, say that again. A fish. Yes, not just a fish, but a whole fish. A whole net full. Look at all those fish up there. That's a ton, isn't it? Well, you can grab a seat. Thanks so much for playing. That was. You guys did an amazing job acting out. Remind me, if I ever need somebody to act like a fish, I know who to call. Well, you see what happened is that Jesus did a miracle, and their net suddenly caught tons and tons and tons of fish. So heavy that it was actually starting to pull the boat down. Now, Simon was freaked out. He was like, hey, master, go away from me. I'm a sinful man. And listen to what Jesus said. He said, "Do this is in Luke chapter 5. This is where you can find it, Luke chapter 5. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will fish for what? People. Now, when I was a kid and I heard that, I thought that's so weird. I mean, if I saw a piece of cheese on a hook, I'd probably try to eat it and then, <coughs> that's not what we're talking about. We're not actually talking about fishing for people. What Jesus was saying is, Peter, now you're going to help invite other people into the kingdom of God with me. You're going to follow me, and you're going to see people turn their lives around, and you're going to see God change lives. So, everybody say, Peter. Now, uh, we're going to talk about the next person. Uh, you see, Jesus called somebody else to be his disciple, to follow him, and I need somebody else who can help me by guessing up here. Oh, man. You guys are always so kind. Yeah, right there in the, the black shirt. Yeah, come on down. All right. So, uh, here we go. We're going to put up the picture. They're going to do it. They're going to act it out, and you're going to guess, okay? So, see if you guys can figure it out. <laughs> it's like a weird clap. What do you think? Got any guesses? Maybe do it a different, maybe do it a different way. Huh. Oh, there's a little sound there. You got any guesses? Money! That is correct! That is awesome. You can grab a seat. That's right. It was money. You see, the next person that Jesus talked to, his name was Matthew. Everybody say Matthew. Matthew. Now, one thing that's interesting, listen to this. I don't know if I'm going to tell the other services this, but I'm going to tell you guys this because you guys are awesome, and I think you'd like to know this. But uh, in different Gospels, Matthew it goes by different names. And so when you read the Gospel of Matthew, you read his name as Matthew. But when you read Mark or you read Luke, you'll see that his name is Levi. Isn't that interesting? Now, there could be a, do a couple different reasons why. It could be that it's the same name, but just a different language to represent each one. It could be that after he met Jesus, it changed his name. Uh, because it, it, Jesus may have changed his name to show what he's going to indicate that he's going to follow Jesus. We don't really know. But when you read about Matthew, when you read about Levi... They're the same person. That's good to know. Now, Matthew was a tax collector. This was a big deal, and here's the reason why. Tax collectors worked for the Romans. The Romans were the rulers who led over the Jewish people, and they were pretty harsh. And tax collectors were Jewish people that worked for the Roman government, which meant that they went to their own people and said, show me the money, right? And so they would have to pay up, and they would take this money to the, Roman, uh, to the Roman rulers. And not only that, tax collectors would say that they owed more money, that people would owe more money, and you know what they did with that money? 
they pocketed it and paid themselves with it. So you can imagine, these people were not liked. If there was a Jewish person that saw a tax collector, you could pretty much imagine that they were going to, you know, I'm not going to look at you, I don't want to see you. Right? You can imagine that they were not kind towards them. But listen to what happened. You see, Jesus went over to where Matthew was sitting at his tax collection booth. And Jesus said the same thing he said to Peter. Follow me. Now, this was a big deal. Jesus was, the word about Jesus was spreading. People wanted to be around him. They wanted to see what he was going to do next because people knew that he was doing amazing miracles. And you know what? I love what the scriptures say. It says immediately. Everybody say immediately. Immediately. That means there was no pause, no hesitation. Immediately, he stood up and he followed Jesus. Not only that, this part is where it gets really interesting. It goes on to say, uh, uh, I'm going to skip that last one there, Mr. Sam, but it goes on to say, Jesus, uh, after this, Jesus left the house, and he said, follow him. So Levi, or Matthew, got up and followed him. But after that, Jesus and Matthew went to the, Matthew had this party that he invited everybody to come to. He invited all of his friends, which his friends were probably tax collectors. They were people that were outcasts in society, people that others would look over. But here they are, and he, you can imagine what this was like. Well, there were some religious leaders that came along, the Pharisees, and they saw this, and they started asking, who is this teacher? Why is he hanging out with tax collectors? Why is he hanging out with sinners? But Jesus heard them, and because Jesus is Jesus, This is what he said, listen, pay attention. These are the words of Jesus, and I don't want you to miss them. Jesus answered them, healthy people don't need a doctor. Who does? Sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to turn away from their sins. You see, Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. Jesus came to bring dead people back to life. Jesus picked the most unlikely group of people to be in his inner circle. When you read through your Bible in the book of Matthew, you would read the recordings of somebody who was with Jesus, the one who got up and left everything from his past life and followed Jesus. That's what the Gospel of Matthew is. It's Jesus' life told from his perspective, inspired by God. You see, Jesus, he looks at the real person. He looks at the real you. Other people would say, you know, maybe I want the smartest. Maybe I want the the strongest. Maybe I want the fastest. Maybe I want the most good looking. Maybe I want the most, uh, the person who has the most followers on social media or who has the most YouTube channel followers. But Jesus looks at the heart. Jesus looks at the real you. So here's our bottom line for today. Our bottom line is simple, to include people who are left out. Why? Because Jesus did that for you. Jesus left a perfect heaven. He stepped down from that and came in the form of a human body. And he, off, he lived a perfect life that none of us could. And he died on a cross, nailed to it. And after he, he, he had died, he had come back to life, proving he's the son of God. Why did he do that? So he could include you in his family. Can I just tell you, you are valuable. You're not valuable because of what you can do or how popular you are. You are valuable because you are made in God's image. And guess what? The person sitting next to you, they're made in God's image too. So look for people who are overlooked. Look for people who are left out and invite them to be with you. Invite them to be part of God's family too. Let me pray for you, and then Miss Erica is going to tell us what we're going to do next. Lord, we thank you for your great love for us. We thank you that you include us even when we don't deserve it. I pray that uh, you would help us to look around, whether it's our uh, a family member or a janitor at school or somebody on the sports team or somebody on the, the playground at recess, that you would help us to see somebody who needs a friend somebody who needs Jesus, and we would walk alongside them and encourage them and include them in what you want to do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Thanks for joining us today for 252 Theater Online. We hope you had a great time learning about the big idea. 
We'd love to get in touch with you. With your parents' help, you can visit our Facebook or Instagram page to message us any questions or prayer requests. If you would like a daily devotional that goes along with what you just heard, click the link in the description box below to download a God Time card that you can do at home. We have incredible fun like this every weekend, so make sure you click the subscribe button so you can see when our newest videos are posted. If you have younger or older brothers and sisters, we have amazing weekly content for their age group too. And of course, our doors are open every weekend for you to experience 252 Theater in person. Have a great week putting this big idea into practice, and we'll see you again next week.